and you're not telling me your appreciation rate, which means I have freedom to invent. Yes, so Diego and Isabella, talk to me. What's the story? Teacher, I write them on email. I didn't receive an answer. Isabella, what's your version of the story? Mm, I never see the email. You do realize that this project is a great and it's worth as if you're, you're by measure exam, right? This is not like in primaria where all the grades go together. In secundaria, you have your daily average plus by measure plus appreciation divided by three. So, if your daily average is, give me a second. I'm gonna give you an idea of your daily average. So this was for oral skills. If your daily average, Isabella, is, and you didn't give me module five, Isabella. So if your daily average is 4.9 plus one, plus whatever appreciation I come up with, that's 4.9 plus one. Let's say I give you an appreciation that's not high because you didn't do the work. Wait, so you have 4.9 plus one, plus let's give you a four appreciation, divided by three, that's 3.3. .3. Is that a grade that makes you happy? If it makes you happy, makes me happy or not my kid. Diego Lopez, same thing goes for you. Let's say your appreciation is 4.8 plus one, plus four, that would be a 3.4. Are you happy with that? So then why did I not see the work? Where is the work? Janice is out, she got her grade. What about you, Diego and Isabella? When am I gonna see that work? You have until Friday. Today is Tuesday. You have until Friday. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Diego and Isabella. Isabella, I'm looking at the blonde patch on your head. I wanna see your face. Did you understand what I said? Good. Daniel Guillen, you were told to do your spelling again because it was not good. Because for some reason, you don't understand the concept of I didn't receive it. Where is it? Where's module five? Daniel. Sorry, teacher, I, I, I did, I forget about that work. So does that mean you want a one? I, I can do it again. Sure. Yes, yeah. and remember, not two, two is cholitones. Got it? Okay. Okay, so now that we've covered that, ladies and gentlemen, this is our last class. It has been fun. I've enjoyed every single conversation with every single one of you. So we're gonna close off the school year with the topic that is on everybody's mind still. But we're gonna go from a different perspective and each one of you has to answer the four questions that I have for you. We're gonna be talking about how interesting 2020 has been. And I think you already know that next school year, we're gonna start off um, um, virtual, uh, at least for the first trimester. Because the whole concept of sometimes you go to school, sometimes you don't, it's just too confusing. And it's not fair to parents because it, virus doesn't work on certain days of the week and then not on others. So until we're sure that everything is in the clear, it's better that you stay home in your little bubbles. But it has been a very interesting year. Very, very interesting. So my first question for you, listen carefully. Tell me one thing that you learned about yourself. One thing that you learned about yourself in 2020, what was the most interesting thing that you discovered about yourself? Because I think that for the first time in your lives, you didn't have to go to school, like get dressed in a uniform and actually get in a busito or something and go to school. What are you showing me, Diego Lopez? You got a cell phone? Woo! Yay, he has a cell phone. Teacher, this is not my cell phone. It's my thousand cell phones, but I'm showing you that I write them on Gmail. 
Oh, that you wrote them on Gmail. Oh, yeah, Isabella, what's wrong with you, girl? Three times I did. Three Janice times. answered me the, Friday, the last Friday. And what, so, did, what did Janice say? Janice said, um, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, perdón, no había revisado mi correo. Ya entregaron? She write me in last Friday. Um, she's here again. But I, Isabella didn't Isabella answer me. Isabella answered you. Mm -mm. Cute. Real cute, Isabella. Real cute. So that's question number one. Tell me one thing that you learned about yourself uh, in this 2020. Who starts? Let's start with Sean, just because he's looking at something yeah. else. I didn't hear you well because you froze. Oh my goodness, I froze. That's horrible. One, one thing... One important thing that you learned about yourself in 2020. We're going to start with Sean. I think that I learned that I like school. When, when I was in school, I was saying that school is the most horrible thing in the life. Okay. So Sean figured out that he loves school. Isabella, one thing you learned about yourself in 2020. I don't know yet, teacher. Okay, we're gonna come back to you. Daniel. Well, I realized that I talk too much and I think much about the existential question. Okay, so is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's like like a curiosity that invades me sometimes. I get like praise and thinking about that. Well, that's so a good it, thing. It's something. Good. So, are you saying that in 2020 you thought more about these existential topics? Yes, teacher. Nice. Tomas? Uh, people hold me down sometimes. What do you mean? And I mean in my uh, maturity. In your maturity? Explain, explain. For example, if I was attending school uh, physically this whole year, I'd probably get like Ten amonestaciones, amonestations. Why? There's a dog. I know. Daniel is just being silly. It's it's a stuffed toy. Uh -huh. Why were uh, you punished so much? Because people affect <laughs> you. You me. allow people to affect you. You are, people just do what they want to do, but you permit the, them to affect you. Okay. So you, you yes. learned about yourself that people affect you? Yes. D, Diego Lopez? One thing you learned about yourself? Uh, I don't know, teacher. I don't learn anything oh come on of course, of course you did something that you didn't know that you could do or that you could be and then you figured it out this year uh, that i can survive a quarantine <laughs> <laughs> good one isabella back to you okay so i learned that i need to appreciate more my family and my grandma and my family because I I have not seen some of my some of my families some of my cousins and I learned how to cook oh you learned to cook that's nice so what do you cook what can you cook tell me one thing you cook nice and delicious mm, a lot of things and 
I think that everything. Food or pastry? Food or desserts? Food. Oh, like rice. Oh, and, and, oh that's really nice, Isabella. That's really nice. Okay, question number two. What was the most difficult part of this year for you? What part of 2020 was the most difficult for you? And we are starting with Sean Foster again. What part of 2020 was the most difficult for you? The first trimester. Okay, why? It does, your, your answers don't have to be about school, it's about life in general. Uh, why, Sean, why was the first trimester difficult? Because we have to do like 16 models in one week, and that was very difficult. Modules, not models. Models are modelos, like, ooh, no, modules. Yeah, so that was difficult. Good. Uh, let's go to Diego Lopez. The most difficult thing, the most difficult thing about 2020 for you, doesn't have to be about school, about anything. Be alone every time. So there are people in your house, right? Yes, but... Not always. The most time, I'm alone. Oh, that's not nice. Yeah. Tomas Carvajal, the most difficult part of 2020? The most difficult part was doing push-ups and sit-ups in PE. <laughs> How is that difficult? You're young. Why was that difficult for you? Because I am flaquito. Okay. Mm hmm Hello, Daniela. Thank you for coming. Okay, Daniel, what was the most difficult part of 2020 for you? Uh, he, he, my most, the most difficult part for me is that I'm thinking about to do a biz, business in this year, begin a business in this year. So, uh, I'm thinking what the people can like on their their opinions about my business. So I'm like thinking about that my my business. So were you able to figure it out? Yes. What did you want to do? I Isabella, the most difficult thing about 2020. I think that the first trimester was difficult for me. Yeah, because That's you, disappeared. It. you disappeared completely. <laughs> because I just have everything and my parents give me everything, so I don't need nothing. Yeah, but you, yeah, but yeah, I understand. Daniela, what was the most difficult part of 2020 for you? You're saying, um, like, going to the classes in a virtual form because it's not like, oh, every time I go to school like this. And it was, like, stressing, and I didn't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Question number three. How would your year have been different if COVID had not happened? How would your year have been different? You can tell me two things that would have been different about 2020 if there had been no COVID. Let's start with Sean. Okay, maybe Sean froze. Let's go to Isabella. It's easy. Two things that would have been different in your year if 2020 had not happened. It doesn't have to do with school. It can be anything. Back to Sean. Two things that would have been different for you in 2020 if COVID had not happened. Nothing, only the, the modules that we have in school. 
oh my goodness, he's so focused on school. Sean, other things. It doesn't have to be school. Other things. And that in that. this month, I, in other years, uh, we were buying like uh, Christmas things and. And <laughs> what is it? Is this the second time you do that? You drop off the um, Christmas things, teacher. Okay, so in other years, in previous years, you would have been buying Christmas things at this time of the year. Good. Oof, Isabella, two things that would have been would have been different if COVID had not happened. Um, school and. Mm. I don't know, your school. Why are you people so focused on school? Don't you have a life apart from school? No. <laughs> For instance, one thing that you would have been probably gone out more with your friends, you would have been to the mall, you would have been to buy ice cream, things like that. It's school, school, school. Come on, people. There are other things. Let's go, Daniel. Two things that would have been different in this year if covid had not existed that my hair won't won't uh, grow too much mm -hmm. and that uh, i was going to be more well i was going to be fatter fatter Más gordo. why why would you be fatter if COVID hadn't happened? Because I like to go to restaurants, but <laughs> I I miss that restaurant like right now. I didn't go to a restaurant like for five months. <laughs> okay, I got it. Tomás Carvajal, how would your year have been different if COVID hadn't happened? Uh, so uh, I guess my athleticity. Athleticity. Yeah, but that's not the word. What's Ath the word? Athletism, probably. Yes, athletism and knowledge. How would it have been different? Would it have been better, worse? What, what would have been different? Uh, knowledge, worse, and athleticity, better. Athletism better. So, so what you're saying that if it hadn't been for COVID, you would have learned less than you learned this year. Uh, no, I'm. I don't mean that stuff. I, I mean knowledge about certain things apart from all the topics in school. Okay, so you had a lot of time to research other topics now that COVID was here. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Nice. Diego Lopez, how would your year have been different if COVID hadn't happened? I would not have gone bald. Diego Lopez, you don't look bald to me. Yeah, teacher, but before I was bald this quarantine because okay. of the quarantine and the COVID. You were bald, like bald. No hair, yeah. what ball means, because of the quarantine. Yes. I remember it. Yeah? How? Yeah. how I, I, I didn't remember that. Okay. That's one thing. What's another thing? My phone will be okay. <laughs> Daniela, two things that would have been different if COVID hadn't happened? Um. I wouldn't have been so stressed at the first trimester. Yeah. And I think that I could pass more time with my family if this wouldn't have happened. Because mm -hmm. yes. in my house already that COVID came. <laughs> okay. oh. And I was uh, the only one here that was safe. And they told me like, no, you can't get out of the room, the bedroom. And I was like, I'm already here. 
Wow. Yeah, that must have been hard. Okay, last question. Each one of you is going to tell me two dreams that you have for 2021. Two dreams or two expectations for 2021. Two things that you wish to see happen for you. Please, not only about school, there's more to life. Okay, let's start with you, Sean Foster, and complete your sentences before muting yourself. That the vaccine could um, function, function well and that uh, I could go outside and play with my friends. Nice. Isabella, two dreams for 2021? I don't know, teacher, I'm thinking. Daniel, two dreams for 2021. A dream. Yes, two. Me. Yes, Daniel. Make, a, a, create my own business and make a sum of money to have to my future. Nice, nice dreams. Tomás? Uh, find a way to make uh, money, like a uh, job that takes like two hours, that I can work on my free time and uh, learn to program. Mm. Good. Diego? Two dreams for 2021? Go to school. I don't want to be making class at home. If I'm at home, I want to sleep, not get class. Okay, so that's one dream. Give me another one. Another dream. There's a teacher in that house. <laughs> Isabella, back to you. Two dreams. Okay, so um, I think that um, made a company, a little company of the things that I know, like making um, scrunchies and those things and get a little job of watching dogs to get money and buy my own things that I want. That's nice. You know, I'm really super proud of you. Three of you are talking about opening a little business or a little company and, and getting your own money. I love that. I really love that. Uh, Daniela, two dreams for 2021. The one is that they take me off the braces. Oh, you have braces in your teeth. Okay, that's one. And, yeah. Um, teacher, I think that's the only one. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So people, um, this is our last class, hallelujah. We're not going to have any more classes. Woohoo! it's over. Yay! It has been a very difficult school year. Don't let anybody tell you this was easy. It was not easy. And um, to you, all of you, I really admire you because you turned in all your work, most of you. I don't think that if I had been a teenager, I would have been able to do as well as all of you have done. So I really admire you and I congratulate you. I'm super happy I got to be your teacher this year, even if it was just an accident. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna be your teacher next year, unless there's another accident, because I don't usually teach the lower grades. I don't do media, pre-media. I haven't done it for more than 10 years, but it has been a really wonderful experience. Um, it had to be done, and I'm really happy I was able to do it. Um, maybe next year will be different. Maybe you'll have a different teacher, or maybe you'll get stuck with me forever and ever and ever and ever. We don't know yet what's going to happen. But I want you to know that I'm super, super proud of all of you. 
I remember when we started, we had like three classes. It was only Tomas Carvajal and me. <laughs> that was interesting because I'm like, what, what can I talk about to this kid? <laughs> but it was fun, Tomas, and you're a really brave kid for just sitting there with one, me and you for one hour talking. That was good. And then the rest of you started coming in, and it was just really fun. I've enjoyed spending time with you. I think I have changed my mind. I used to say, I'm never going to teach your children in primer ciclo, primeria, no se testo. No, I don't detestar any of you. You're wonderful. And, and I, have, I have really enjoyed this. So in closing, I want you to know that this has been a really special year and that it was great knowing all of you. And if I do not end up being your teacher next year, probably not, not sure. I want you to remember that you are amazing. Never forget that. And that the fact that you were able to go through this and come out with such good results means that you are super awesome kids. Okay, so we're going to end this and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.